My name is Dani Ita. Welcome to the London Buddhist Centre and welcome if you're watching us on YouTube. Um, it's so, it's so nice to be up here. I've seen Metro Bandu, um, you know, sit up here with somebody else um, in countless Poetry East interviews. Um, so it's quite nice just to be interviewing the interviewer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we're just going to start off with a little breathing space meditation. Um, so why don't you get into meditation position? Let's all get into meditation position. So closing your eyes, listening to the sounds outside of the room. Listening to sounds inside the room. And listening to sounds inside your own body. Tuning into the breath, seeing if you can breathe down the body, then to your feet, into your sit bones. Breathing into your heart area. And broadening your awareness to include the whole body again.
Yeah, so welcome if you've just joined us. Um, it's a very, very special evening. Uh, we're commemorating the death of Bhante Sangharashta, the founder of the Tri Ratna Buddhist community, um, which the London Buddhist Centre is part of. And it's also um, a celebration of his, of his life. Um, and um, yeah, just a way of us remembering Bhante, bringing him into the Buddhist Centre, bringing him sort of, um, into, into our lives on a special day. Um, I'm just really excited because what we're going to do this evening is, um, well, I'm just going to have a conversation with Maitre Bandhu um, in the first half of the evening, um, and then there will be the obligatory tea break, um, tea, um, juice, biscuits, um, and um, after that, Maitre Bandhu is going to be reading excerpts from a yet unpublished poem that he's been writing for the last while. Um, and then we're going to uh, finish the evening uh, with a ritual dedicated to Dante. Um, so that's the sort of shape of the evening. Um, and I'm delighted to be, uh, to be interviewing Maitre Bandhu. Um, he's somebody I regard as a close friend, um, a dear colleague, um, and also someone who I look up to as a teacher, my teacher. Um, and it's just like a real privilege to be interviewing you about um, your relationship to Bhante, Maitre Bhante. Um, and also I, I just wanted to take this opportunity to ask him about this, this sort of mysterious thing of um, having a teacher and what, what is that about? Yeah, particularly from a Buddhist perspective. So I thought we just we could just start um, by I don't know you might bond you and saying when it was that you met Bonte? Do you remember your first meeting with Bonte? Mm. Um, yeah, sure enough, to be here. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um, yeah. I, I I think I think my first the first time I saw him was when he gave a talk at. Um, What's that place? In your call. <laughs> your call. Um, I remember David went to give a talk at the same, <coughs> same event. Um, and I, you know, I, I remember people used to talk. People would say, "Bante, oh, Bante is going to give a talk. Bante is going to give a talk." I, 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 at the time, I assumed that Bante was an affectionate nickname. You know, um, it was actually quite a few years that I realised it actually meant Venerable Sir. It always um, the Venerable, Venerable Teacher. I actually thought it was like a, a nickname, you know, like an affectionate nickname. Anyway, people would say, oh, Bante's talking. And so I was very excited, and I went to, to your call to watch him. And I was, I was very underwhelmed, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he struck me as being like a sort of, um, a sort of very dignified junior school headmaster. Um, <laughs> he wore this, you know, he's got quite a big tummy, and he had... It's actually, look a bit, bit like me. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a big tummy, but I, I'm not so dignified. But he was, I was about to say he was wearing a tweed jacket. So hang on, I'm really <laughs> he was wearing a tweed, a tweed jacket and very sort of smart with a tie and walked very and talked with this very, very this voice that we, we all, many of you will have, will have heard. I don't remember anything of the talk at all. And, you know, I remember thinking, mm, it's a bit, a bit disappointing. Um, I wanted something more mystical, or in fact, mystical <laughs> at all. <laughs> and then um, my next, the next time I sort of met him personally, in, in the old days you could ask to see him. Um, he used to live, you know, just up where, where the office is, and you could ask to see him. And um, so I thought, I'll ask to see him, you know. Um, so you have to wait outside, and then somebody would come in and say, uh, Banty is ready now. And I was completely nervous. And I went in, and there's a, there's a little corridor, if you, if you go into the office, there's a little corridor where he used to have all these coats. So it's quite tight, yeah. you know. Yeah. And anyway, he was coming down the corridor, and I was coming towards him. And I said, hello, Bante. And then I went to put my hand to shake his hand. And then I thought, oh, no, you don't shake your hand with a teacher. So I then dropped my hand. <laughs> of course, he went to take shake my hand. And he was like, <laughs> we were like wobbling. <laughs> This corridor, and then I sat down. And, you know, he had this long, so it's very threadbare 
you know, if everyone worries that this is a cult, all you need to do is go and see Bantis Flag because it was so threadbare. It was a very threadbare old sofa. And I, would, I was perching on the top of it. And um, I remember starting to have a conversation with Bounty about the art and poetry of Blake, about whom I knew next to nothing. Um, so I started having this conversation with and Bounty immediately could see that what I'm talking about. Um, so that failed abysmally. Um, How old were you? I was 25, something like that. Okay, so you're quite young. Uh, very young, but you know, a young 25. Um, <laughs> and then um, at one point he took off his glasses to clean them. And I thought it was a Zen teaching. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was completely, you know, Vanti later on described me as almost impossibly naive. <laughs> <laughs> So I thought it was a Zen teaching, and I thought the teaching was, I hate you. And I thought, I hate you too. <laughs> I literally almost crawled out. It was a disaster, you know. And um, years later, I, t- I, you know, I told the story to Bante. He said, mm, you won't be surprised that I, I don't remember it. <laughs> In other words, I made no impression on him whatsoever. You know, you always hope that like, he's going to pick up something. I've got a particular sort of potential. Nothing. <laughs> Didn't he remember me? He said, but I do remember the first time I saw you. That is a bit like a hotel. Um, he said, you were sitting on the, on, the, on the step of the London Buddhist Centre in a pair of very ragged shorts. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I want to say, they were trendy at the time. <laughs> ragged shorts. Very ragged shorts. He said, you looked very forlorn. <laughs> and then he said, but look at you now. <laughs> so the, the, the moment it, my relationship changed, because I used to just, you know, I had this awful meeting with him, and I thought, I, don't li- I, di- I just didn't like him. He was obviously just bored, you know. It was like looking out the window, he was, he was obviously bored. I'm not surprised, I was just sort of incapable. Of, you know, he must have met lots of people who just immediately sort of frozen with him. And it's, it's quite a lot of pressure, you just think... So it's now a job for him to sort of, you know, where have you come, what do you do, you know. Um, anyway, the time, I, I was about to be ordained in 1990, and I was, so I was, would be 29 by then. And I got this note from him, because we, we were, the first year we were going to wear robes, <laughs> blue robes, and, and I was trying, I kept, I was trying them on, I couldn't make, I couldn't make it, I work out how you put them on. So I got this note from Bunsen, saying, and he often talked about himself in the third person. I hear you're trying to put these robes on. If you'd like to, Bante is willing to show you. Um, little little note. But he wrote it himself. He, he actually wrote a little handwritten, handwritten note in, <laughs> in the pigeonhole. If you'd like me to help you, Bante, not not I, but Bante is willing to show you. So I then run down with, you know, I was so excited because I, you know, wearing these robes. You're not supposed to be excited. They're supposed to be going forth. But anyway, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it seemed a fashion thing to me. Um, <laughs> And I rushed down and knocked on his door, and there he was, ah, you know, and I, sh- I had these big rows, and I said, I can't, I can't work out how to do it. And then he very carefully, with Paramartha, sort of showed me to put them on. And uh, I said, um, oh, do you know, I've been trying to put them on, and I just couldn't make it work. He said, mm, I think they found a way in the last two and a half thousand years. <laughs> <laughs> and I hooted with laughter, and that laugh sort of broke broke the kind of projection in a way mm-hmm. um, and he liked it that I laughed obviously but the other thing that struck me about that moment is I forgot to be nervous of him mm-hmm. and it was also quite nice that he was you know he'd just say oh let me just you know, like, this, and then like this and then do that and mm-hmm. we had something to do you know so it sort of broke the nervousness of it and he thought it was very you know me being sort of, being in that sort of dizzy sort of state he found sort of slightly amusing you know for him he'd taken the robe after, you know, this walk through the desert, and, you know, and all I could do was think, you know, how do you put it on, you know. Um, so that, that laugh kind of broke that kind of problematic kind of um, projection. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think you were trying to impress him? Was I trying to impress him? Wait, with the robes? No, no, well, I guess before, prior to that moment. I wonder whether I was. Or was it just nerves? Or? I think there's, it's a weird thing meeting your teacher for the first time. Mm. In Bant- Banti, you know, uh, you know, I lived in, in a certain sense. The first time I met him, Bante, uh, you know, I mean, by the word Bante, I always mean a bit. I've been mean more than the, 
person who comes from Tooting. And I mean, the first time I met Bante, uh, my teacher, capital T, was on my first weekend retreat where I, we used to play recordings of his talk. We don't do that anymore. We used to, that's all we did. You know, you just sit around and somebody would press play. And, you know, I remember various of the team on the retreat nodding off, um, you know, in this cold room as we would play and Bante's voice, very slow voice. And um, th- this, this talk, it was called Breaking Through to Buddhahood. And I experienced it, you know, reflect, let, looking back on it, it was like a fully Buddhist, you know, you know this thing, you know, direct transmission outside the scriptures, no dependence on words and letters. That, that's how I experienced it, as, as a direct transmission outside the scriptures, no dependence on words and letters. It, that is actually exactly right. That you, it was like, it was, it was a, the most uncanny experience I'd ever had, where it was as if this man knew the absolute most intimate facts about me, and the most universal facts about the universe, and told me about both at the same time. It was really quite odd. Mm. Like, how does he know this? You know, um, so, you know, I met the person having really... I mean, it was like a direct transmission outside the scriptures. I knew it, it was just... It was like a revelation, like, you know, like you hear revelations of God and so on. It was like a revelation of the Dharma, the, the truth of things. So I was just very nervous to meet him. Um, I was very nervous anyway as a person, but how do you meet him? What, what do you do? You know, mm. I was sure I was going to get it wrong. And yes, probably I was trying to be clever. You know, talk about Blake. You know, I don't even like Blake very much. <laughs> um, um, I, I always feel I should, but I never have really. But you know, Bante's very keen on Blake. I'm probably just trying to be clever mm. in that sort of immature sort of way. <laughs> Well, there's two sort of like ways I like to go. One, one is something like you've, you've introduced the word Bante, and you said it's revered, sir, revered teacher. Yeah. And I was thinking that the word teacher, I don't know, doesn't quite capture it when we're talking about yeah, that's right, yeah. our teachers or Bante mm. uh, himself. Yeah, it doesn't. Really. What, what do you? What's the kind of more when, when we're saying teacher? You think. Yeah, it's so difficult to say. We've got no language for it, partly. Um, like, I never think about Bante as my teacher, in, the, mm. in a certain sense. I, I think of Bante as Bante. Mm. Um, and that's the same, you know, I think of Jan of Archer as Jan of Archer. I don't think of him as a Buddhist or someone who came from a certain place. He's Jan of Archer. He's irreducible. Mm. You know, um, every, all of us are sort of irreducible to ourselves. Um, and, and can't be we aren't categories we can't be mm. categorised um, we can't be um, all, all you can say is a name <laughs> you know um, you know mm. when I used to say you know I used to say dad you know I, my, 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 my dad and that, that hit him within the name so for, for me Bante is when I say Bante I I mean that irreducible, mysterious person. Now, we're all like that, but that was very, very evident with Bante. Um, mm. That he couldn't be categorised. Yeah, he, he wouldn't play your games, like, he just wouldn't... He, he, was, he was just a bit out of this world, and at the same time, really, really ordinary. Uh, with a with a with a devious dress sense, you know, um, <laughs> <laughs> terrible interior design sense. He loved purple walls. You know, they had to paint his flat. And we painted them all these purple. It was awful. Um, <laughs> purple carpet, really odd, you know. Like anyway, um, <laughs> but you know, um, there was always some, there's always something about Bante. I mean, sometimes you don't like him quite. You know, la- la- you know in, I remember one. T- time when I tried to disagree with him, <laughs> that didn't go well, um, and sometimes I didn't like him, you know, sometimes I want to say, look, Bante, you're just kind of saying what you say, I, I do, I am actually trying to ask the question, sometimes you wouldn't quite like him, sometimes you would, but sometimes you wouldn't, and that's true with friends and, and loved ones and so on, um, but there was always, and there always still is in my mind, I, I, I still find that the, the past tense, problematic, I, everyone says, Every time I talk about Bante, I want to say is and now, and so mm-hmm. Bante's like this, not Bante was like that. Mm. 
Um, so, but, but there's always something about it which is some unaccountable. I, I, it's very difficult to characterise it because it wasn't like woo, it wasn't woo woo. You didn't go and do lead on, you know. <laughs> didn't everything just start going sway or something? It was, you know, I remember one time I met him, he said, mm, that chair over there, that was David Mitchell's mother's. Huh? That's where I got it. And that chair was in my mother's. Huh? You know, he would ta- talk me through all the furniture. You know, it's not quite what you expect from your spiritual teacher, you know. Um, uh, you know, sometimes, it's often when my conversation was very sort of innocuous in a way. Um, and yet, you felt the presence of you want to say something huge, but that, that even that's a bit melodramatic. Mm. It was like the room had perfume in it for me, mm. and you came out and you, you, you just you, you would you would come out feeling sort of ten inches taller, and you couldn't think why. And then I used to write down what we talked about. I remember getting the bus home. You know, I used to try and go and see him as much as I could, and I'd write down what we talked about. And I could, you, sometimes you couldn't remember what you talked about, mm. or you'd write it down. You think, well, that's that's not much, you know. Mm. You, um, you know, and I, I would imagine the Buddha was even, you know, sort of like that a hundred times more, where he just says ordinary things, and yet there's some, yeah. some sort of vastness. And you always had that with Bhante, all the time. I never knew it not there. Oh, that's a relief. Because the couple of times I met Bhante, I had exactly that experience of, like, writing it down really quickly, right, yeah. just looking you at think, it and thinking, oh. <laughs> it was much more magical than yeah. I could put down in my notebook. Yes, and it's quite difficult to express that magical note. Because it's not a literal magic, it's not even a, a vastness, it's a, it's a sort of... It's, it's like, he, you know, it's like a wave being in touch with the whole ocean, uh, something like that. But there, there seems to be a, a way in which consciousness can be universal and particular and unique, mm-hmm. and neither trouble the other. But we hardly have a grasp of that. But I felt it all the time. Even when he was very ill, I could feel it. Mm. Um, but you felt it in such a subtle way, didn't you, that you sort of hardly noticed. I mean, he used to just sort of ha, ha, tease me, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask you about that as well, the teasing. Yeah, you often tease me, yeah. Because um, a lot of the things I feel like I've encountered in, in our Buddhist movement is teasing as a fine art. Mm. I don't know if, any, if other people think that, like... Mm. That was the thing I most noticed um, uh, about about you, about other people. I remember being on a winter retreat, and um, Yanavasha just asked me if I'd like a cup of tea. He asked Matrabandi, I was with Matrabandi, Yanavasha asked me if I would like a cup of tea. And that turned into a whole ten minute teasing about renunciation. <laughs> and what was I going to do? <laughs> but, but I wondered if like, that was something that came also from Bante into, into our kind of culture. Yeah, very this sort of, art of teasing. It, it's really this art of teasing, because it, it's very particular. Um, it's, it, again, it's an aesthetic judgment, because teasing can be horrible. Mm. Um, you know, I was teased a lot when I was a child, and it wasn't, um, it wasn't a fine art, it was just horrible. Um, teasing can be, you know, a way of bullying people, a way of belittling them and so on. But this also can be an expression of love and affection. Like Dionysus, we all, <laughs> poor old Dionysus moved out there, possibly, possibly because we all, all we ever did was tease him. <laughs> I mean, t- if you want to learn the art of teasing, you start with Dionysus. I mean, <laughs> it, it's a way of, at best, it's a way of expressing love, you know. Um, like, we do a lot of it in our community. And it's tonal, you know, some t- it's to do with tonalities, which are very, very beautiful. Um, and very funny at best and very affectionate but ne- it doesn't go into it, it's, it's, it's not there's, no, there's nothing hidden in it mm-hmm. you know. I particularly like absurd teases you know um, that are, are so far from the truth like my current one is to keep teasing Abba Yoda that he's gay he's not <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's like the most ungay man you've ever met but I, I keep on and on about the fact that he's, he is actually gay <laughs> it's just because he bought a big scarf now that doesn't that, that, <laughs> You know, you know, anyone who buys a Paul Smith big scarf. Anyway, um, <laughs> but it's the absurdity that I enjoy. Anyway, b- Banty for teasing. I better get away from that. I'm not more of a chat on YouTube. Just a joke. Uh, no, but, the, but this is the thing. 
right? Because when you read Dante, yeah. when you read his transcribed lectures, they're off, they're weirdly flat. Yes, that's but right. But then yeah. when you listen to the recordings of his talks, like we played an excerpt from uh, one of Dante's talks on the opening of the London Buddhist Centre on Thursday, mm. and he's so funny. Yeah, he's But very, he does that thing funny. of like you know, going to the absurd. He was talking about people taking their medicinal vitamins. <laughs> oh, no, their yeah. meditational vitamins, yeah. Mm. Like coming here to meditate for five minutes. Um, yeah. I know, it could, be, it could be very, very funny. Um, and, you know, like, I remember, I used, once I was asked to launch one of his books, and it was very, very sweet, so I came of Vera, who used to be um, working, you know, with him, came of Vera rang me and said, Banty's going to ask you if you would launch, I can't remember which book it was, if you'd launch the book, um, in the day, he said, so can you do it? So I looked at my day, yes, I can do it. Um, so he's going to ring you in about half an hour to ask you to do it. And I said, OK, so you, you can do it. Yeah, I can definitely do it. So, so you can imagine, and then he goes off and tells me, yeah, I've just rang him. He said, yeah. So, then, you know, dream, dream, hello. I said, hello, is Bante here? It's very odd. I said, hello, Bante. And he always did this, and we'd go, ha, ha. I said, hello, is Bante. And my children went, ha, ha. It's very sort of affectionate. They said, what's that? He said, I'm, I'm just ringing to see if you are willing to launch my book. Huh? It's on. He went through the whole thing as if we'd never talked about it. <laughs> and it's going to be, it's going to be published, we're going to do it on this launch, would you be available? It's all been decided. And I said, yes, I think I am available. <laughs> oh, well, that's very, very good. You know, very, very courteous. Because basically he was trying to, he wanted me to do it, but he didn't want the embarrassment of me saying, look, I can't do it that day. So he'd, he'd get someone to do all that, and then, but still go through the ceremony of actually asking me. I thought, you know, I didn't say, actually, that's weird, because Cambridge just re- wrote me. <laughs> 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 do, do you not talk to you? I thought I was in the flat with you. <laughs> yeah, he said, fine, fine. <laughs> well, no, hello, Bantu here. Hello, Bantu. Hi. Oh, yes, I'm well, thank you. Now, I'm just ringing you to say, you know. And then one, one, you know, one of his famous teasings, he would often tease me, uh, one, one, one of the last times I saw him, I always used to go up to the end and... Um, and say to him, or, or you know, I used to always want to thank him, you know. Um, you know, I, I do think it's quite possible that li- literally Bantu has saved my life, you know, I think it is quite possible. Um, I had, you know, I was very unhappy as a young man and as a child. You know, and I, I, I definitely thought of suicide and all those terrible things, I don't know whether I've done it, um, but it's quite possible that Bantu has saved my life. So, I, you know, and I, I always, every time I saw him, I just, I just want to say thank you. Um, and this one time I, you know, the, the most affection, I'm very English, so the most affection I could be was to shake his hand and then hold his hand with my other hand, you know, that, that was it. You know, that's me being affectionate. So if I do that to you, you know, that's me being affectionate. Um, he did hug me once, actually, and I was just, I mean, we might come to that. And um, I said, I just want to thank you once again uh, for all you've done for you. I don't know what would have come up with without, without you or something like that, you know, I don't... Uh, and, he, and, he, and he said something like, um, Yo, yes, it doesn't bear thinking about. Which <laughs> <laughs> is very, very funny because most people demure, don't they? Oh, no, I'm sure you would have been fine. And, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, and he just said, Oh, yes, it doesn't bear thinking about. <laughs> so I sort of hooted with laughter. And he'd often sort of tease me about things. Um, I remember once at a meal with him, and somebody asked, asked me, would I like more? And I said, oh, yes, please. And he said, oh, yes, my trail bandit can resist anything but temptation. <laughs> 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 Which is a you know, direct quote from Oscar Wilde, but, you know, it's quite, <laughs> quite sort of... Yeah, it's, it's difficult to realise how affectionate Bante could be. Mm. I mean, he could be not affectionate as well, um, but he, he could be, like, extraordinarily affectionate. In a way, it's quite... It's, in, in his atmosphere, almost. Mm. Can you tell us about the hug then? Oh, yeah, the, the hug, it was quite, that was like, um, I wrote about it recently, but um, I went to talk to him, because there was, you know, there's, all, all, there's always been these scandals about Bante and sex and his sex life and so on, um, which I, you know, I hope everyone knows about by now. Hello, everyone on YouTube. Um, <laughs> you, know, um, you, you know, I've talked about it hundreds and hundreds of times, but. You know, in the first, I can't remember when it was, whether it was the first Guardian article or the second or this thing or that thing, but I went to see him um, around that time and uh, we'd chat, you know, we'd, inconsequential things. And then 
I, I said to him, oh, Bante, I'm, I've, to, I've been thinking about you and your sexuality. And you can see him think, okay. You know, you, you can see, you, there's a certain thing with Bante's tonalities where you could almost feel him withdraw his psyche and start to look at you. You know, you, you, you could see him think, okay, now, I'm, now where are we going with this? And I said, you know, I, I, I'd had this interesting experience where somebody I was due to ordain... Um, I don't know whether we want to go into them. Someone I do to ordain, he'd asked me, am I, was I attracted to him? Was I physically attracted to him? Mm. And I had this very interesting experience of saying, well, if you were gay, which he wasn't, and if you, I was your age, which he wasn't, and if you were in my prize bracket, <laughs> if, I could have, if you were gay and in my age, and you would have been slightly interested in me, which he wouldn't have been, you know, he was very, very handsome. Um, I had my moment, but it was lasted about 15 minutes. Um, <laughs> then, of course, I'd be attracted to you. You know, I'm not, I'm not insensible to that. You know, um, you know, I was trying to say, if this was the case, and that was the case, and you were actually interested in me, which would, you know, which is, well, none of those things were true, then, of course, yes, I would. I, you know, I, I would. Of course, I'd like to sleep with you, if all of that was true. You know, I wish I hadn't got into this. <laughs> can, we, can, we, can we just turn the, the, the tubey thing off? <laughs> um, anyway, um, then, of course, and what, but what struck me about it is that this friend of mine is very, very healthy, not at all kind of neurotic about things like that. Um, you know, he's straight. I, I, I never liked that term, straight. I, I know lots of straight men, and I wouldn't... It's a horrible term, isn't it? It's a pejorative term. Anyway, um, and heterosexual sounds terribly medical. You know, um, <laughs> I think nowadays people have to come out as straight, don't they? You know, hi, I'm straight. You know, I know that might be difficult for you. <laughs> but, you know, um, anyway, I, he, he, the more I tried to explain, the more this friend of mine just felt more and more... You could see he was thinking, oh, it's true. And the basic guy had just been trying to sleep with him. Mm. It was a very interesting experience, because... He wasn't a kind of sort of neurotic, silly person. Um, and I, retol- I told that story to Bante. So I said, so I think I can understand why you decided not to say anything about it. Because if you say, the more you say, the more people think. Like anything you say, if you explain something, it looks like you're explaining it away. If you don't talk about it, it looks like you're hiding it. If you say there's truth in it, it looks like you're trying to minimise it. There's literally like no way of doing it, you know. And he, he said, yes. And now, there's a particular thing with Banter when he says yes, where it, it, it's, it's like, yes, now we're, yes, that's, that's true. And then we had this really incredible conversation about his sexual experience, incredibly candid for a man of his age. I was really struck by how completely candid he was, was with me. Anyway, at the end, I, you know, I, I went to talk to him. I went to say thank you once again. I just want to thank you. Just as I always do. I mean, I say that in the way, but I did really feel that and do really feel that. Um, gratitude is, is too pale a word, but because um, you know, I also feel gratitude to my parents, but I don't follow their teachings all the time. Um, you know, I, 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 gratitude is too pale a word, but um, I, you know, I said that again, and I walked towards him to sort of, you know. Gra- because he was quite elderly by then and often would stay sitting as you left mm. and as I walked towards him he stood up really quickly um, and said I want to thank you I feel I can be perfectly candid with you I don't feel I can be perfectly candid with in this case all order members I, I can't quite ever remember no, but I feel grateful for it and I appreciate it, mm. and it but you, I can't impersonate the strength of it when people sometimes think that Bounty isn't emotional, it's because you've not seen Bounty's emotion. When you see it being him and being emotional, you just think, all right, all right, jeez. <laughs> it's, it's so strong. Yeah. I mean, it is quite shocking. You know, like, this incredible, you get this incredible uh, attention on you, and all of his emotions are going towards you. Uh, it's really quite frightening, even. Um, and anyway, he said, I, he said all that, and then he flung his arms around me and gave me a great big hug. And he'd, he'd never done that before, and he'd never done it since. Wow. It was, and I, I, and you know, I that suddenly became, oh, all right, all right. I'm a bit busy, I've got to go. <laughs> but, you know, you know, being embraced by Bantu in that way was yeah. a, quite a sort of shock. Yeah. But he obviously felt... I think so many people have been trying to talk to him about it. I mean, he, he did say in that conversation, you need to remember that 
I was born only two years after the trial of Oscar Wilde. Mm. So B- Bante was born in the same year that um, Mein Kampf was published, for instance, Hitler's. You know, so you can see where the whole, you know, the world started from there. And um, The Great Gatsby was published in the year that Bante was born. And it's two years after the Wilde trial. So, it's you know, very, different. very, very different world in terms of homosexuality. And, you know, he, he, you know, a hugely sensitive man, hugely um, gifted man, and you know, having to not mention any of that. Mm. Uh, and I think just somebody being willing to talk to him about it without sort of prodding him yeah. is very, very sensitive to you trying to get an answer out of him that you want, not actually... If you felt that you were trying to get an answer, you were sort of prodding him, he would just close down mm. and just go, and, you know, make non-committal noise. You know, he'd obviously had a lot of that. I was just struck by how much he was pleased to talk. You know. hmm. That's quite interesting. Um, something that you you just mentioned, I thought, oh, this I've heard this from other people as well that it's sometimes really hard to bear Bante's positivity. Hmm. Um, you know, the sort of like the the full flush of his of his um, yeah positivity hmm. um, and emotion. But, actually. Yeah. I want to move on to a slightly different, or look at it from a slightly different um, angle, which is about reverence. Mm. Um, mm. Maybe I could just ask you, like, do, do, you, do you feel like you revere Bonte? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, my mind has been destroyed by writing poetry. Um, and what, what are the things I've done? <laughs> Don't need to yacht not. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly rhetorical, <laughs> but it makes you very, very sensitive to words in a, in a, in a weirdly sort of you know okay. university way. Um, I, I just don't think there's a, an adequate word. Reverence sounds too religious to me. Mm-hmm. Gratitude, as I've said, is too pale because you know gratitude is something you really need to be having towards our friends, towards our parents, particularly um, your siblings and so on. This we've got everything to be grateful for. So. Great saying you're grateful for a teacher is too pale. Reverence sounds too kind of religious and a bit like that. Pious. Uh, a bit pious to, in my, to my ear. Love sounds is too romantic. Casual. And too casual. I love people once someone once said to me, Yeah, but you love Banty and I thought, I wouldn't put it like that, no. I mean sometimes I didn't even like him. Um, so love is a bit too it's a bit sort of in, in, is emotional. Um, what else have you got? Reverence. Oh, no, re- uh, respect Golly, it's, bit... it's like the headmaster, isn't it? <laughs> respect. Yeah, I do respect you. In other words, I hate you and I disagree with you and I think you're rubbish, but I respect you. <laughs> Great. You know, actually, I'd rather have soppy love, wouldn't you, than respect in that yeah, sort I'd of. I'd rather be loved. Than yeah, respect. you know, rather than that sort of cravatty respect. Um, so I don't think there's a word, really, frankly, that works. Mm. Reverence would have to do, but it's not how it feels. Reverence feels like you're in church, to my, into my mind. When were you with Bounty, you didn't think you were in church. This is a perfectly ordinary person with terrible cardigans. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, know, um, you didn't feel you were in church. But there's... The, the, but love... Re- they're, they're all getting at something that's close to it, yeah. Mm. You know, I, what, what I feel more is that I'm his disciple. Mm. Um, I, I feel that very strongly, that I'm his disciple. From, because I received the Dharma from him in the sense of a direct transmission outside of outside the scriptures. Um, he opened the Dharma to me. And the Dharma isn't an abstraction, much less an ideology. It's a living spirit that only comes through people. Um, and it came through Bounty for me. Uh, so I, I'm his disciple. Now he once said that if you're not a disciple, all you can be is a bad teacher. Which I think is a very, very uh, telling remark, because if you're not a disciple of someone, all you've got is you, and then you just teach you, and then say you're a bad teacher. My, my other way of thinking about it just recently is that you're, you are a disciple whether you like it or not. It, it's, it's a question of what are you a disciple of, or who are you a disciple of. Um, you know, if you're, you, most, a lot of people are disciples of money, or disciples of prestige, or you can even be disciples of your parents in a way that's not very healthy. Mm. You need to feel gratitude and love for them, but you, you shouldn't be a disciple of them. Mm. Um, that's quite unhealthy. 
um, pe- pe- I-, I think human beings are disciples. I mean, you grow up as a disciple. You know, you you are a disciple of your of, of your of your um, of your parents. As, you know that. I, I, you know, you, they're gods to you. You know, um, so it, I think you are a disciple whether you like it or not. It's a question of who are you a disciple or what are you a disciple of? Mm. You know, like I don't know. Um, I've been I've been reading Marilyn Robinson. I've read all of her novels. You know, she's a she's a, a great thinker, a Calvinist thinker, and a <coughs> wonderful novelist. David Mitchell's not so sure, but. I think she is. Um, uh, and when I read her, I'm a disciple of Marilyn Robinson. Mm. Um, when I read um, Elizabeth Bishop, I'm a disciple of Elizabeth Bishop. You know, if you to read well, you need to be a disciple for the time of reading. Mm. You know, um, in other words, you need to be open to their influence, um, wanting to learn from them. You know, I have a poetry friend, tutor, mentor, and I'm definitely a disciple of hers. That's you know. Mm. You know, if she makes a squiggly mark on my poem, I spend forever trying to correct it, so I get it. When she's happy with it, I'm happy with it, you know. Mm. Um, now, you can't learn unless you're a disciple. Mm. Anything. You can't learn mathematics, you can't learn, you can't learn courtesy, you can't learn anything unless you're willing to be a disciple. All you can be is a bad teacher uh, if, you, if you're not a disciple. Uh, you, all you've got is your tuppence worth in your, of your own mind, mm. uh, which is so, so, so small. So, being a disciple, I think, is a given. Um, but if you're a disciple for money or, you know, bad television or whatever, then you, that's the kind of person you are. That, you know, you'll have nothing, you'll have nothing to give anymore. Um, now, Bounty is, you know, is a prodig- prodigiously gifted, irrespective of the Dharma. You know, like, this is a man who read... Uh, Par- Milton's Paradise Lost at 13 and had the strongest poetic experience of life. You know, I, you know, Alex and Rhea, my, my two girls, you know, Alex, she, you know, she's 15 now, but the idea of her reading Paradise Lost when she was, you know, two years ago and have the most, you know, anyway, it's, it's a little bit beyond her. Sorry, Alex, if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a tad beyond her, really. Um, yeah. You know, that, that's prodigious. You know, it's, it's quite, you know, Banty is a genius, without doubt. Mm. Um, Genius is always a bit problematic, actually. We, we, we want geniuses, and then we complain about how difficult they are. Um, you know, whether it's Einstein, or whether it's um, Schopenhauer, or whether it's whoever else, you know, whether it's Tolstoy. Whether it, then you have all these books about how, what a nightmare they are. But, you know, it's because of genius. So many of the things that we've got are because of individuals' genius. The light bulb, you know... Um, from the light bulb to space travel to the CAT scan to mm. Milton's Paradise Lost. Um, so I, I, I think you are a disciple. The, the question is, is to whom and to what? You know? And of course, I would say that the greatest thing to be a d- disciple of is the Dharma. Mm. And that needs to be through people. It's not, you can't catch it from books. You can get a bit of it, but you, mm. you need to live it with people. It's a whispered lineage, much, much of it. Um, I've got two questions for you, and maybe that those are the two questions that we'll finish on. Yeah, much right, bonding. Exactly. Um, I've been wondering a bit about discipleship, because Bhante says something like, you know, um, Sri Ratna is a community of his disciples and his disciples' disciples. Mm. And he did sort of um, make a caveat to that afterwards yeah. and talked about how discipleship might not work for everyone. Mm. As a um, word, as a word, yeah. particularly, but um, in terms of like, yeah, we're disciples to the extent that we follow um, mm. the practices that he and share an understanding of uh, the Dharma. Yeah. I just wondered about you having your disciples as well. You know, he said, yeah, yeah. "My disciples and the disciples of my disciples." So, you as having somebody having disciples yourself. So that was the first question. And then the other thing was, um, my good friend Yana Rucci um, told me that he had a conversation with you. Uh-oh. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, this is, this is, this is on YouTube. <laughs> it is, it is. No, no, but it touches on the uh, the the thing about um, spiritual geniuses, because he his question to you, and this was a few years, about three years before um, Bante died, and this is now you know a commemoration of three years his, 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 after he's died and. 
What Yanaruchi asked you is, um, what do you think um, we need as a community to thrive after Bante's death? And he said, you know, he told me that you said something like, well, we need spiritual geniuses and we need saints. Mm. Um, so I was also wondering, how do we grow? How do we grow spiritual geniuses and saints? Mm. I don't have to think about that now, but let's go. What was the first bit? The first bit was. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, maybe you don't actually think about oh, the, it. I, that's my what disciples the first, were the first bit, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, Bounty is very clear about that, that they are your disciples. Um, that there's something important about that that, that I can't quite get to. But there's, you know, he, he was very clear that, yes, they, they are your. If you ordain someone, what, what Donnie Tarr means is I privately ordain people and publicly ordain people. And they are, they are your disciples. And what he's trying to get at there is, is again, it's not an abstraction. They're not, you're not just sort of passing something on. It's nothing to do with you. P- personally, I don't ever think like that about people I've ordained. <laughs> I, you know, um, I mean, I, I, you know, um, Marx said all things solid. You know, Karl Marx said all things solid melt into air. Um, I, I think all things dharmic melt into friendship. Um, mm-hmm. I think friendship is the ground, the ground of everything, and everything goes back into it. Mm. So I, I would, I would rather talk into. I mean, Bounty himself was like that. You know, I'd rather talk in terms of friendship and leave the rest out. If you see it. It's not my business. If you see what I mean, mm. somebody was just talking to me recently, saying how 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 influential I am, which I just don't. I, I really genuinely don't say, I'm just trying to be a friend, you know, imperfectly trying to be a friend. Um, so I, I don't personally think of people I would ain't admire. I don't go around thinking, I've got how many disciples. <laughs> <laughs> I, I probably sort of should, in a certain sense, and I'm not, I'm not sure what I think about that now. I, I, I agree with Bante. Um, I don't think it's good to think like that. I think it's better to think in terms of friendship. Mm. I think... I mean, with Vidi Dark, for instance, who I ordained many years ago, um, everything, it, it's just, it, we're just friends, it doesn't matter who ordained who, you know, um, in a way. Um, we're just friends. Um, that, that's the important thing. And, and by friends, I don't mean mates, I don't mean pals, I don't mean colleagues, I mean friendship as Bante has, has revealed to us, and, and, and as the Buddha Dharma reveals to us. And then, the second question about how do we grow spiritual geniuses and saints? Maybe you don't think in those terms anymore. I, I don't think I do. I mean, I, I think I might have been thinking that people are either geniuses or saints. I think Bante talked about this once, didn't he? I think, I think he thought he was more of a genius than a saint. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, lots you? of people would agree. What? Which one are you? I don't think I'm either. <laughs> I'm definitely not a saint. <laughs> um, I have met, you know, like Sivadri, the man who ordained me, I always think is rather saint-like. Mm-hmm. I've always thought Rat Negotia is rather saint-like. The other Arch is an unusual mixture of genius and saint. Um, <laughs> I remember uh, uh, we, I got him to, trying to get him to read the voice of the Buddha in one thing, and he, said, and he said, oh, no, 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 I can't read the Buddha, I'll just be the Buddha's mate. Uh, <laughs> and that's, that's real as well, you can just be the Buddha's mate, you know. You, you need a world of just friends, mm-hmm. and friends... It's a funny old thing. It's got all the gravitas in the world, and it has all the play and all the just like nothing very much, you know, just just being around each other because there's no nothing to do with life. So you just make friends and you just be friends, and that's it. There's nowhere to go with it. It's nothing, not for anything. But I do think we need. Um, what, perhaps I wouldn't talk about um, geniuses and saints anymore. It's a bit, all of sounds a bit grand, but I, I think. I think we need courage, mm-hmm. uh, and we need to grow that, and we need to take risks. Um, the great risk at the moment is that we won't take risks. For instance, I won't take risks because I'm now on YouTube, and people can dislike things that I've said and you know, say so all over Facebook. If we're not careful, we have a world in which we won't take risks. And that will, that will destroy the Dharma, because... The Dharma life is a risk, yeah. If you don't want to take risks, watch Netflix. You know, um, get, get a pizza and watch Netflix. Don't come here, you know. Um, 
I mean, it's not a risk in a sort of horrible way, but, you know, if making friends um, is a risk. Yeah. Communicating, telling the truth is a risk. Um, committing yourself to the Buddha Dharma is a massive risk. You know, um, uh, that, so we need, definitely need, I, th- I think we need courage. Not silly courage, not sort of courage to do daft things, mm-hmm. and not even risk to do silly things, you know, like, there's a, you know, that, I remember that craze in bungee jumping. Um, you know, I absolutely would not. <laughs> so why would you do that? What a stupid thing to do. Um, but, you know, what I would want to say to that we need to grow now at this moment mm. is courage. Courage to live. And um, life is a, is a risk, you know. I was just on, on this panel earlier on and someone was asking the panel about COVID and what did we think about that. And one of the things that strikes me is it, is it this whole thing about risk and that the COVID, the COVID risk, and you know, COVID is a huge risk. But then I was telling the story of, you know, watching somebody cycle by, talking on the phone um, without a helmet, uh, wearing a mask. <laughs> <laughs> so you think, okay. You know, how are you doing with risk assessment? <laughs> you know, lorry is going past him, wobbling. And, anyway, you know, you're wearing a mask. You know. <laughs> so we've really learnt something about danger and risk there. You know, very, very difficult to quantify risk. But to live, you've got to take risks, haven't you? For responsible risks, sort of. You need to break the rules sometimes. You need to. You won't learn otherwise. I mean, Banty was like that. He was sort of. You couldn't, he's not a good Buddhist. He's not a good Buddhist, a nice kind of cheery old man. He was, he was a risk to be around. Um, mm. He had something more and would light that up in you. Mm. And, you know, that's a risk. Mm. But uh, for me, in my life, it's, it's brought incredible riches to my life. It's also brought a lot of trouble to my life that I wouldn't have had. But um, you can't have riches without trouble, I don't think. Um, yeah. Maybe that's a good point to end. Um, just on that image of um, Bante igniting yes, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's quite a traditional image, actually. That's like that's the um, role of the guru um, in transmission. Yeah, yeah. Is to right. ignite. Yeah. yeah. They light uh, the spark, and it's your spark. And it's your spark. But, you know, it's not like when you light something. You know, it, it's the, you know it's your spark, but it needs to be lit. Yeah. And Bante has done that for all of us. Even now, you know, it's not that's not finished. Um, but it's a risk, yeah. And, and if you don't want the risk, don't do it. You know, there's lots of other stuff to do. Okay. I hope that's helpful. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's have a little break, um, and uh, we'll just uh, go next door. Um, if you're on YouTube, um, do do get yourself a drink as well, and Sangajit's going to come and. Up with Robin and chat to you. Mm. Uh, your moment, Robin? <laughs> <laughs> Talking to the world. Yeah, yeah. He wants to talk about gratitude to parents. How <laughs> <laughs> you use a challenge them sometimes. Fun. <laughs> yeah, fun. Good, thank you very much. Thank yeah, you. Thanks so much, Ivan. I see him on here, and I see myself. I see myself. Yeah, yeah. I see the um, questions and people like um, that. Okay. And then that might be when it's on. So, can I hear me now? Yeah.
think you go to school. And then... So you think they can hear me now, yes? Yeah, yeah, it'll be picking up now. Okay, and great. If you look at the... If you did want to sort of look in their direction, it could be... Up and down the wall, okay. Yeah. And they've been zoomed in. And they've been zoomed in. All right, sorry if you're on this um, channel watching us do all our tech <laughs> and me get my bearings. I'm just having a little scroll through this little iPad here and seeing who's with us. So, oh, so Badger Maskey's online. It's nice to see the first name pop up with Badger Maskey's. Yes, I uh, yeah. Yeah, anything else. So, yeah, so hi, so Badger Matty. I've got Ollie, I've got Lutum, and I've got Harvey, Patrick, Cedric, Herbert, Yvonne, Simon, David, Trisha. Robin's just coming into view here. Hello. These are all the people that are watching the evening, Robin. Um, so they're, um, they're logged in. Wait, can I hear us now? Yeah, they can hear it, but it's a little bit behind. But I think they're probably all off getting cups of tea and things, and then they'll come back. Wait, is this me in the past? About five seconds ago, that's good. Mm. Anyway, we're talking to people up there on YouTube. Hello. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if you are out there and you want to um, talk about anything in particular, yeah, my name's Sangajit, and, um, and he's Robin, and we're here to talk to you about the evening, and about Bante, and about um, Tree Ratna, and anything that you want to talk about in the tea break. All the people here, oh yeah, all the people here have just gone out into the tea room. If you've ever been to the LBC, you'll know exactly what's happening. There's lots of tea going down, and biscuits, and chatter, and... And yeah, we're here. So if you want to uh, ask a question or start a little subject of chat, you just got to type it in here into your um, chat box. And oh, there's Jai Raja. Hey, Jai Raja. Great to see you, Jai Raja, Jai Raja. And um, yeah, well, we, Jai Raja came and stayed with me. I'm trying to think when that was, that was probably about eight years, seven or eight years ago, but I had two little babies with me at the time. Robin was very young, and now he's a big, nearly, well, he's a nine-year-old now, so it might be a bit strange for Joe Raja, but um, you'd be out in the country somewhere, presumably. But this is what, um, this is what Tree Ratna has been for me, particularly, has been a, just a, 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 just a, a sort of ever-widening group of friends that um, people like Joe Raja come into my life and you know we do things together or we become friends and people go off and do projects in different parts of the country, different parts of the world and then yeah we go on some order weekend or um, some retreat somewhere and there they are again somebody that you've known you know, really well. Uh, Arya Parla, see then, great example. Um, what I was talking about, Arya Parla, used to see it at my local all the time. Don't know, I know he's out in the world somewhere. He's, I see lots of things on Instagram from Arya Parla. Yeah, just um, do make a comment or ask a question. <coughs> Here comes Robin again. <laughs> Jaya Raja's on there, you won't remember Jaya Raja Robin. He was, um, he came to Staylands when you were a little baby. Eden was only a real little baby. Oh, I don't remember. No, I think not. Anyway, we need to look up there, Robin. There's the camera up there. Is he on the wall up there? Hi. Oh, Cedric said that, thank you, that was one of the most beautiful talks I've ever heard. Not You're welcome. <laughs> Not from you. <laughs> He's talking about my <laughs> my trip uh, and uh, and done in time. But I agree, it was really good, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, he made a lot of funny comments. He did, didn't he? He didn't understand some of them, though. Did he? No. Okay. Did 
Do you understand any of them? I don't drop your best beer in the tea. <laughs> don't leave it in there too long. You fall in. Soggy. Right, Joe Rogers says, Robin, do you prefer football or cricket? Cricket. <laughs> Okay. Maybe you can stand there and show them some, show them how you bowl, <laughs> show them how you bat. <laughs> That's my hand legs, <laughs> Are you fitting well, Jai Raja? Are you um? How's all the knees and joints holding up? Right on the football. He's good at football. We, we used to have a we used to have a tree rat in a Buddhist football tournament every year. Oh, well, we haven't had one for a while. Oh, I could play. Like Would I you play? I'd play. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't yeah, play good fun. Play. Really good fun. Every year we'd have it. People would come from all over the country to play in the tree rat in a Buddhist football tournament in Victoria Park. And it would be absolute carnage. There'd be people going down with injuries and. Oh, having clashes and tripping each other over and upset and glory and, tra and trophies and everything. It's brilliant. So, yeah, so some of my friends like Joe Raja are not through football. But yeah, I'm happy, really happy to talk about Bante too, especially at, um, this evening. If um, he's taken up Jiu Jitsu, Joe Raja. Yeah, that would suit him. Mm -hmm. I have to have a wrestle with him when you see him next. Me? Yeah. Oh, Eden should do that. Yeah, Eden's doing Taekwondo. So we can have a little match up with Jai Raja, perfect. I think what we should do, the next time we see Jai Raja, we should all just try and take him down and hold him down and pin him down. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's what we'll do. But we won't tell him, we'll just sneak up on him. See how good his Jiu Jitsu is then. But yeah, no, I, I, um, I'm really, really pleased to be here this evening because, um, yeah, it wasn't that long ago that Auntie died and it was a very, very moving day. I was asking Robin on the way up if he remembered it, but I don't know. When you the day that Auntie died or the time that he died? I don't remember the day, but I remember Auntie. Mm. Robin's met Bante when he was a baby. He got a blessing from Bante. Was that? Yeah, he went. He went up and I asked Bante if he would give Robin a blessing. Um, this is when he was living in Birmingham, and uh, I wrote to him, wrote to Bante, and he agreed. And then we all, we went up there. Michelle, mm. um, Michelle, Robin, and I went up. Eden wasn't born yet. It was just, just you, three or four months old, I think you were. Me. Yeah. And we took you up to see Bante, and we asked Bante to give a blessing, and he chanted some verses, and um, and. Yeah, and you vomited all over my jeans. <laughs> and, uh, and then he gave us all presents. And it was really, really lovely. And we gave him presents. And we didn't manage to do it with the other, the other kids. So we've got three children. It was only Robin that got to meet Dante and have a blessing. So you're the blessed one. Siri, was Siri and Siri alive? at the same time, a tiny bit. No, that, that was when we went up, and I met Bante when we went up to Adistana. But was Sri ever alive when but Bante she was, was? Yeah. Born to so not very long, like, less than one year. Yeah. Can I want a cup of tea, but if I go off my cup of tea. You can ask for a cup of tea. Can I have a bit of chips? Yeah. How hot is it? No, it's alright. What's oh, hot? So where are you, Arifala, if you're online and you're hearing this? Are you, where, where are you in the world? Hello. Great to see you again. And yeah, do say where you're coming in from. Uh, does this microphone got anything to do with it? That's, the, that's how they can hear us. Can you hear me? David Ross is in Bogner Regis. Who's David Ross? David Ross is in Bogner Regis. That's his. And I'll be doing stupid tonight. Hang on, I'm talking to the boy. Harvey? Oh. Harvey? Oh. 
Yeah, so that was that was an interesting meeting, wasn't it? I took you up to meet Vante, and um, well, I did used to have. He did a bit like Macho Bandu said when he, in his talk. He liked to um, you know, meet Vante regularly. And I used to do the same thing myself, actually. When even very from right when I first came along to Tree Vant, no, I moved into community quite early on in the um, in my involvement. I moved into community with Macho Bandu and Yonavacha and Parama Bandu and Macho Raja and um, Major Seal, and yeah, the, and some other guys. I used to go along regularly. I just was really drawn to go and want to speak with him and meet with him. And I, and I, I never had any sort of nervy times or anything like that when I was meeting Bante. I used to just chat, I suppose, a bit like what I'm doing with you now. I think he would actually talk back <laughs> and um, we, we would chat about all sorts of things and he was always very warm and I definitely um, agree with what Macho Bandu was saying about the type of atmosphere that was around Bante and also to what, how you'd feel when you come away. I always used to think of it like the equivalent of going on retreat, it was like the experience that you, you know when you go on retreat and you spend a weekend or a week or whatever it is away and then there's something that's there's something of the retreat that stays with you for a week or two weeks or however long you're lucky and then even like three four weeks down the line you sort of get a scent of it again and you that something of that mindset but i used to have a really similar experience to that when with meeting Bante. i'd leave feeling like it's something had really changed and then it would it would sort of stay alive for a while and come back and alive. And, and I think there was something about that that I used to love to go back and see him for and try to meet with him fairly regularly. So, um, so I would, I, and, I, and I think also too, I, I always had a sense that his life, from when I came along, wouldn't be wouldn't be long from when I came along. I think. Uh, so I came along in two thousand and nine, and yeah, he died in, the, in less than ten years. You know, nine years later, he died. So, uh, I guess I knew that from the coming along that time would be short with Bante, in the, even in the best case scenario. And I didn't want to miss the opportunity, I suppose. I didn't want to miss the opportunity that I could have seen him and I didn't, or I didn't, didn't see him as much as I might have wanted to. And so I always um, tried to you know, take advantage of going to see him and um, I don't think I ever had any big questions really. I think I thought he might give me some advice at some stage. I remember the first time I remember asking him, do you, you know, do you have any advice? And he said, he said to me, oh, well, advice is easy to give, but it's hard to follow. And, uh, and then he just sort of said that the people that know me well, he knew that I was living in the community at that time and he knew that they would those who said those people would know you well and they'll be able to help you with anything you need and um, so you put a lot of they put a lot of um, confidence Abante put a lot of confidence in um, the people the order basically he uh, that's what struck me he had so much confidence in the order and order members what's your question um, if I had this coloring you know that coloring book by Aloka yeah um, I found that um, Bante was actually in it. Oh, there's a picture of him to colour in? Yeah. So you've coloured in Bante, have you? Yeah. What colour? I just coloured in black. <laughs> oh, did you? It's nearest pen, I couldn't find any pens. Um, and he, he was like, 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 and there's a little bit of a blend thing going on there with Bante and Darth Vader. <laughs> it was just a coincidence. Uh. The was there. Everyone's coming back now. I've just been chatting to everyone on YouTube. I don't know if they've been hearing me or I'm just talking to myself. Basically. <laughs> Welcome back. How many have we got on YouTube? Uh, 38 on YouTube. We've got... Mm -hmm. um, who have we got? We've got Aria Pala. Hi from Barcelona. Oh, great. I share with Sue Garber here, who runs the Buddha Centre. He's doing English speaking each Saturday. So 
So he's yeah. He's um he's in and then we've also got so from from New Zealand. Oh you do say more where you're coming in from. Um so Roger, we've got Cedric. The first person to log on was Subadramati, of course. <laughs> <laughs> she she arrived uh, something like 5.30 this afternoon. No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she was that excited. She logged in. No, no, she came at 7.15. Oh. Well, <laughs> Nina, Ollie, Bhutan, Harvey, Patrick, Cedric. Yeah, so you're all back in the room with everybody. How long do I carry on like this? Do I just keep going? Am <laughs> 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 no, I getting around that? Okay. All right, well, it's nice to chat with you all, and I'll hand you back. Thank you very much, Sanjay <laughs> and Robin. Thank you very much. last thing I heard of that was a comparison of uh, Bante and Darth Vader. But I think <laughs> 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 it's gone that way, I think. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Did you do your Darth Vader impression? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, very warm, uh, warm welcome back. And uh, I just wanted to really thank um, thank you, Maitre Bandu and Don Utah for that. Uh, for that interview in the first half, I thought it was really. Um, I just think sort of really, just really conjuring Bante, and it's a very, tri it's a difficult question, isn't it? This, if if I've been thinking about why we do, why we why we're doing this evening, why we're we're marking uh, this anniversary of Bante's death, and uh, it, it just definitely feels important, um, but. I think you really raised this the sort of the question of like, are we marking the passing of a friend or a teacher or a founder and is it with uh, respect or love or uh, reverence or um, you know and, and I think what, what you what you did was sort of bring that all into all the sides of that sort of into the room and I was thinking how do, how do how do we go about um, how do we go about marking this occasion? I think it's right that we're marking this occasion. It's three years ago uh, today that, that Bante died. Uh, it feels important to mark it. But I've been re re reflecting on uh, the the day that he died, and I was I was working here. I remember uh, I remember us finding out. Uh, a few of us were, were in a study group together in the in the morning. I think I think I was with Prem Manus and, and others, and uh, we we came out to hear that hear that there was a news that he was in hospital and then about a minute later we got the news that he actually died mm. and I just remember everything sort of everyone's activity for the day just just turned on a on a sixpence uh, every, it just completely flipped around what we were doing and people came to sit in shrine room and chant mantras and then we were planning a, we, we sort of planned two large events that day um, we did a puja in the afternoon and then we did this after the evening class I remember a, uh, had a full uh, room and we did a we did a um, we were sort of we did something I think we went until about midnight um, and we were doing ritual but we were also also just hearing stories from people who knew Bante I remember a number of people telling stories and David Mitra I remember getting David Mitra talking about his relationship to Bante and and just a lot of emotion a lot of emotion in the room and a lot of different sort of um, different perspectives but we were just mainly just coming together uh, and telling stories, and that feels like that's a, that's a like probably the best way, isn't it? Uh, just to come together and remember uh, Bante and our relationship to him, whether that's close or um, as a, as a close friend or as a, as somebody who may have never met him but been benefiting from uh, from his teachings. Uh, and I remember that week and the week after, uh, as as we got ready for the funeral. Uh, it was just like everyone's practice just intensified. It just felt like everyone just needed to uh, practice the Dharma much more intensively. And Bante asked us to chant these uh, these five particular mantras um, uh, after his death. And it feels like also that's the appropriate way to mark uh, mark Bante's uh, death is just to practice the Dharma as he's taught it with more um, with more vigor. I suppose, and 
it, I'm really pleased that this is this this comes sort of at the right time. We've just been doing this urban retreat, and we've had a whole week of really trying to just practice much more intensively in our in our lives. And we've been chanting these mantras a lot. We've been hearing over the last from Monday to Friday evening. We were hearing talks on on each of these five uh, figures. It's a bit sort of mysterious why Bante asked for these particular five uh, mantras, but he did, and we've been. Uh, we've been evoking those figures and chanting those mantras. So, um, uh, yeah, and it feels like this is the culmination of all that, if you like. We've been telling stories, we've been practicing more intensively, and the puja is, of course, uh, uh, an enactment of uh, the most intensive form of Dharma practice that we could imagine. We're, 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 in, we're enacting that uh, in, to, to sort of fire up our desire to really do that with our, uh, with our lives, which is... Um, to use the cliche when someone's died, and that's what Bante would have wanted. I think. Um, so we'll do the sevenfold puja, uh, and uh, yeah, before the main event, if you like, is is, is our sort of uh, the the build up to the puja. So what we'll um, what we'll do is we'll hear from Maitreya Bandhu reading uh, from his poem, as Donny Utah said, um, I believe about uh, about Bandhu and about the time of his death. Uh, and Pranimas will uh, accompany on on the guitar, uh, so we'll we'll sit quietly. I'll probably dim the lights a bit for it, and uh, and we'll sit quietly and listen to that. Uh, and if you like, that's gonna that'll set the scene for our, that'll set the scene for our puja, and then we'll just do the puja quite straightforwardly uh, through with a uh, uh, with a mantra, with offerings, uh, with. Uh, uh, the Heart Sutra in unison, uh, and with the transference of merit, and, and uh, not sorry, with um, with the refuges and precepts as as well, uh, and we'll finish with the, with the concluding mantras that um, uh, that of course features all five of these mantras that we've been chanting uh, this week as well. So yeah, you could sit, set yourselves up to sit <coughs> sit comfortably and uh, listen to. When the news arrived that you were ill again and gone back into hospital, we were so accustomed to you rising from the dead that I for one hardly gave it a second thought. Soon enough we'd hear about your miraculous rebirth with two more, three more years 
overlooking the duck pond, watching, as far as you could see, the sunset and the mallards coming back. But autumn's trash seemed so much rubbish, after all, hung out on the trees. And Archibiades' dogs snarling by the gates, a cormorant obscenely wet struggling to follow, swallow a fish, suggested over-music. There should have been last songs. We have, through joy and sorrow, hand in hand gone wandering. A white swan blazed across the lake, a mother's ornament. The fountain blew its top, while the lanes you loved, deep lanes, unsuited to heavy goods, brought your body back to where you lay, unharassed by tittle-tattle and bad faith, with flowers at your head. The wind outside made every tree funereal, throwing down their leaves. Seagulls brought their sea cries far inland. Friends prepared your coffin, a cardboard coffin, painting it with rain, while Strauss's larks flew musing into the haze in E-flat minor above sheep-shitty fields. A pheasant kick-started its rancorous alarm. Let me not be my own life, for through myself I have lived badly, Augustine. And when it did start raining, real, not fictive, softly in the trees, then quickly building, it sounded like the start of rapt applause. permit myself a flash forward inserted here midsummer three years later box hedges peonies losing their head the rose disaster a wooden bridge constructed by the mad gardener who even now is wheeling another barrow full of vitriolic chit chat to the everlasting bonfire the birds of herefordshire and worcester stitch a pattern here and there, but still no thread will hold you, was or is. In the, in the barn this morning, hard standing footprint of our cathedral, open to the wood pigeon's lament, the martins back and forth, the roar of next door's tra tractor tore right through the picture that I conjured up. Your coffin pausing here before its final final, how would I know, journey. You'd spent your final month listening to the digger lay the ground for roses and recitation before your friends, live on YouTube, lifted you beyond the banyan trees of Mother India out to your garden grave. I'd asked a friend to bring me long johns to save me from the chill of finding fault with women looking daggers, pontificating men. But here you are, on the gravel path, beside the duck pond, your Roma pushed before you. And here's a friend who sings Koali on the web about the sunset, and you are but a guest for these few days, in broken Urdu. Where was I? An open barn of odds and sods, with morning browsing through it. 
nothing for it but to turn the pages back to speechlessness and that restricted time when after crisps and peanuts I walked a friend back to the waiting coach, the driver waiting, darkness closing up the trees and muddy verges. By next morning, spring was pushing back the clouds, deepening the creases where the farms were tucked away, while the goddess, risen above your bed in white applique, offered her protection. What was she playing at? Your cardigans, grey as post-war Britain, hang beside your gold Tibetan shirt, like discontented winter drooping next to spring while Jerome in Jura's woodcut takes dictation from near-sighted Dr. Johnson in a prickle of holy light. I find it beside your bed, the ceramic head he gave you, handsome butcher's son, another London, friend, friendships, clear light of day, its degree of mutual knowledge in long talks late at night. Two policemen turned up at your flat with your address tucked inside his pocket. He brought a ticket for the underground at Kentish Town, then threw himself under. The scream he'd cut in clay, fixed forever. I sit beside your chair. Time's passageway echoes with the voice of George V. I thought men like that shot themselves. As Leonardo's lady, ermine squirming on her arm, gazes through the window. Which window shall I choose? Round or square? To wear a, to wear a lacquered bonnet, dotted white with freshly fallen snow, floats across the view as Master Basho, staff in hand, sets off for or is he coming back from Irago? Forgive this. Forgive my foolishness. Bless me as you once did, now and always. For March light is entering your room, and May light, and soon the summer weather will kindle Pseudo Dionysius, Tom Gunn, the life of Proclus. The ducks have flown, walked more like, between two muddy poles. I wish that I could shake your hand, call you by our intimate, by our everyday address.
at New Street Station under the single star of Pret and a queue for coffee, trying to perfect, à la de Botton, the art of travel, instead of this unmoored erotic. His face turned towards me briefly like a gift. The carriage, darkened after Coventry, brightens as two shire horses, emblems in a fairy tale, sidle past along with pylons and a sewage farm with gulls. I sat inside your voice this morning, slowing down the pulse like our train that slows but doesn't stop at rugby, vans and packing crates, taking your time, all you had was time, to say rainbows and seven goddesses offering water to wash, water to drink, perfumed water, your voice lingering in Greysdale, not a trace of spring, just a tall wood standing briefly on a hill, an inkling perhaps of change as we gather speed for home. You'd come so far, Tooting, Kalingpong, to disembark via Soho's summer of love at Algar's orchestrated hills, your sodden burial mound overlooked by a British camp, still settling without pomp or circumstance in borrowed English ground. The quiet coach, like a reader reading quietly through a poem, connects the superstore with a golf course, poplars, a road desolate with traffic, the coast you'd hope to visit until your health... Shush. The pauses in your voice on the recording were spaces to imagine. But this disciple, slowing into Euston, past graffitied walls, through blackened tunnels, torch in hand, his light, watch it descend the spinal stair, kept flickering on the face you made appear, on tare, to tare, simply by saying she was there.
Mandarava, Blue Lotus and Jasmine. With Mandarava, Blue Lotus and Jasmine. With all flowers pleasing and fragrant. With all flowers pleasing and fragrant. And with garlands skillfully woven. And with garlands skillfully woven. I pay honour to the princes of the sages. I pay honour to the princes of the sages. So worthy of veneration. So worthy of veneration. I envelop them in clouds of incense. I envelop them in clouds of incense. Sweet and penetrating. Sweet and penetrating. I make them offerings of food hard and soft. I make them offerings of food hard and soft. And pleasing kinds of liquids to drink. And pleasing kinds of liquids to drink. I offer them lamps encrusted with jewels. I offer them lamps encrusted with jewels. Festooned with golden lotus. Festooned with golden lotus. On the paving sprinkled with perfume. On the paving sprinkled with perfume. I scatter handfuls of beautiful flowers. I scatter handfuls of beautiful flowers. Salutation. As many atoms as there are. As many atoms as there are. In the thousand million worlds. In the thousand million worlds. So many times I make reverent salutation. So many times I make reverent salutation. To all the Buddhas of the three eras. To all the Buddhas of the three eras. To the Sadhamma. To the Sadhamma. And to the excellent community. And to the excellent community. I pay homage to all the shrines. I pay homage to all the shrines. And places in which the Bodhisattvas have been. And places in which the Bodhisattvas have been. I make profound obeisance to the teachers. I make profound obeisance to the teachers. And those to whom respectful salutation is due. And those to whom respectful salutation is due. This very day. This very day. I go for my refuge. I go for my refuge. To the powerful protectors. To the powerful protectors. Whose purpose is to guard the universe. Whose purpose is to guard the universe. The mighty conquerors who overcome suffering everywhere. The mighty conquerors who overcome suffering everywhere. Wholeheartedly also I take my refuge. Wholeheartedly also I take my refuge. In the Dharma they have ascertained. In the Dharma they have ascertained. Which is the abode of security against the rounds of rebirth. Which is the abode of security against the rounds of rebirth. Likewise in the host of Bodhisattvas. Likewise in the host of Bodhisattvas. I take my refuge. I take my refuge. Namo tassa. Namo tassa. Bhagavato arahato. Bhagavato arahato. Samma sambudhasa. Samma sambudhasa. Namo tassa. Namo tassa. Bhagavato arahato. Bhagavato arahato. Samma Sambudhasa Samma Sambudhasa Namo Tassa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambudhasa Samma Sambudhasa Budhang Saranangachami Budhang Saranangachami Mang Sadananga Chami Mang Sadananga Chami Sankhang Sadananga Chami Sankhang Sadananga Chami Dutyampi Budhang Sadananga Chami Dutyampi Budhang Sadananga Chami Yampi Dhamang Sadananga Chami Yampi Dhamang Sadananga Chami 
Yampi Sanghang Saranangachami. Yampi Sanghang Saranangachami. Tat Yampi Budhang Saranangachami. Tat Yampi Budhang Saranangachami. Tat Yampi Dhammang Saranangachami. Tat Yampi Dhammang Saranangachami. Yampi Sanghang Saranangachami. Yampi Sanghang Saranangachami. Panati Pata. Panati Pata. Veramani. Veramani. Sikhapadam. Sikhapadam. Samadhyami. Samadhyami. Adinadana. Adinadana. Veramani. Veramani. Sikhapadam. Sikhapadam. Samadhyami. Samadhyami. Kamesu. Kamesu. Mechachara. Mechachara. Veramani. Veramani. Sikhapadam. Sikhapadam. Samadhyami. Samadhyami Musavada Musavada Veramani Veramani Sikhapadam Sikhapadam Samadhyami Samadhyami Suramariya Suramariya Maja Maja Amadatana Amadatana Sikhapadam, Sikhapadam, Samadhyami, Samadhyami, Sadhu, 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 Sadhu. With deeds of loving kindness, with deeds of loving kindness, I purify my body. I purify my body with open-handed generosity. With open-handed generosity, I purify my body. I purify my body with stillness. With stillness, simplicity. Simplicity and contentment. And contentment, I purify my body. I purify my body with truthful communication. With truthful communication, I purify my speech. I purify my speech with mindfulness clear and radiant. With mindfulness clear and radiant, I purify my mind. I purify my mind. Confession of faults. The evil that I have heaped up. The evil that I have heaped up through my ignorance and foolishness. Through my ignorance and foolishness. Evil in the world of everyday experience. The evil in the world of everyday experience. As well as evil in understanding and intelligence. As well as evil in understanding and intelligence. All that I acknowledge to the protectors. All that I acknowledge to the protectors. Standing before them. Standing before them. With hands raised in reverence. With hands raised in reverence. And terrified of suffering. And terrified of suffering. I pay salutations again and again. I pay salutations again and again. May the leaders receive this kindly. May the leaders receive this kindly. Just as it is with its many faults. Just as it is with its many faults. What is not good, O oh protectors? What is not good, O oh protectors? I shall not do again. I shall not do again. Rejoicing in merit. I rejoice with delight. I rejoice with delight. In the good done by all beings. In the good done by all beings. Through which they obtain rest. 
through which they obtain rest, with the end of suffering. With the end of suffering. May those who have suffered be happy. May those who have suffered be happy. I rejoice in the release of beings. I rejoice in the release of beings. From the sufferings of the rounds of existence. From the sufferings of the rounds of existence. I rejoice in the nature of the Bodhisattva. I rejoice in the nature of the Bodhisattva. And the Buddha. And the Buddha. Who are protectors. Who are protectors. I rejoice in the arising of the will to enlightenment. I rejoice in the arising of the will to enlightenment. And the teaching. And the teaching. Those oceans that bring happiness to all beings. Those oceans that bring happiness to all beings. And are the abode of welfare of all beings. And are the abode of welfare of all beings. Saluting them with folded hands. Saluting them with folded hands. I entreat the Buddhas in all the quarters. I entreat the Buddhas in all the quarters. May they make shine the lamp of the Dharma. May they make shine the lamp of the Dharma. For those wandering in the suffering of delusion. For those wandering in the suffering of delusion. With hands folded in reverence. With hands folded in reverence. I implore the conquerors desiring to enter nirvana. I implore the conquerors desiring to enter nirvana. May they remain here for endless ages. May they remain here for endless ages. So that life in this world does not grow dark. So that life in this world does not grow dark. The Heart Sutra. The Bodhisattva of Compassion, when he meditated deeply, saw the emptiness of all five skandhas and sundered the bonds that caused him suffering. Here then, form is no other than emptiness, emptiness no other than form. Form is only emptiness, emptiness only form. Feeling, thought and choice, consciousness itself, are the same as this. All things are by nature void, they are not born or destroyed, nor are they stained or pure, nor do they wax or wane. So, in emptiness, no form. No feeling, thought, or choice, nor is there consciousness. No eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind. No colour, sound, smell, taste, touch, or what the mind takes hold of. Nor even act of sensing. No ignorance or evidence. Nor all that comes of ignorance, no withering, no death, no end of them. Nor is there pain or cause of pain, or ceasing pain, or no path to lead from pain, not even wisdom to attain. Attainment too is emptiness. So know that the Bodhisattva, holding to nothing whatever, but dwelling in Pranya wisdom, is free of delusive hindrance, rid of the fear bred by it, and reaches clearest nirvana. All Buddhas of past and present, Buddhas of future times, Using this pranya wisdom, come to full and perfect vision. Hear then the great Dharani, the radiant fearless mantra, the pranya paramita, whose words allay all pain, 
of the suffering of all beings. Go to the alleviation of the suffering of all beings. My personality throughout my existences. My personality throughout my existences. My possessions. My possessions. And my merit in all three ways. And my merit in all three ways. I give up without regard to myself. I give up without regard to myself. For the benefit of all beings. For the benefit of all beings. Just as the earth and other elements. Just as the earth and other elements. Are serviceable in many ways. Are serviceable in many ways. To the infinite number of beings. To the infinite number of beings. Inhabiting limitless space. Inhabiting limitless space. So may I become. So may I become that which maintains all beings. That which maintains all beings. Situated throughout space. Situated throughout space. So long as all have not attained. So long as all have not attained. To peace. To peace. Om Tare Om Tare Om Tare Om Tare 
Shakyamuni Shakyamuni Swaha Swaha Om Muni Muni Om Muni Muni Maha Muni Maha Muni Shakyamuni Shakyamuni Swaha Shakyamuni Shakyamuni Swaha Swaha Om Mahum Om Mahum Vajra Guru Padma Vajra Guru Padma Siddhi Hum Siddhi Hum Om Mahum Om Mahum Vajra Guru Padma Siddhi Hum Siddhi Hum Om Mahum Om Mahum Vajra Guru Padma Vajra Guru Padma Siddhi Hum Siddhi Hum Gate 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 Pada Gate Sangate Arasangate Bodhiswaha Bodhiswaha Gate 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 Aragate Aragate Arasangate Arasangate Bodhiswaha Gate 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 Paragate Paragate Parasangate Parasangate Bodhiswaha Bodhiswaha Om Shanti
it's so lovely to spend this evening with you. If you could put your mats and cushions away and we could say goodbye in the, in the tea room. <coughs>